morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel, to Killinger, whatever you want to call it. Um, thought I'd show real quick what what I do to finish a handle. Um, I, I've, I was taught this technique by an Amish craftsman um, who still works like it's 1870 or 1890. <laughs> um, about 1890. He still makes everything by hand, uh, with hand tools, and he taught me this, this technique, and I really, I think I'm all closed in over here, closed in, bigger shot. I really like this technique, it's easy, um, and the results are fantastic, um, so I thought I'd just show you what I'm doing here, and um, talk about what, what's going on a little bit. All right, we'll try to get you guys close. Um, what this is, is, is a card scraper. Uh, this is just a homemade one. It's it's sheared off of an old saw blade. Um, I didn't make it, I bought it like this. It was cheap. Uh, but the, the idea is, is like this edge, these edges are, are 90 degrees. And then a burr is rolled over the edge. So it leaves like a sharp... A sharp edge it, it it acts like a knife now mine's not tuned great i need i really need to spend the time on tuning this but um it gets by i gotta find the you'll know when it's when it's working you'll feel it catch so all you do is you're, you're just scraping a layer of um, wood away, right? It's a fine layer. And what happens is when you use this method, it cuts the wood instead of um, severs the wood. So it leaves like a smoother, smoother glass-like finish. Um, that's, that doesn't require several grits of sanding to achieve a, a fantastic finish. Um, I used to sand several different grits all the way to uh, 320, and then I would do my uh, finish, but I found that this leaves a much better, more comfortable finish. Um, and it looks better and results are better <laughs> and it's really super simple um, you can buy card scrapers from woodworking stores uh, woodworking tool stores or whatever they're, they're easy to find eBay, whatever um, doesn't have to be fancy I have some fancy ones but uh, I always just grab this one because it's ready to go so the other cool thing is like I have glue down here it'll scrape this glue off without gumming up obviously glue is dry so but sandpaper will still kind of uh, gum up a little bit so just work down my handle you can you can really see you're not gonna see it in the camera but you can really see the the, the wood change it gets like a, a slight sheen to it, um, and the color gets a little darker. So that's that's how you know when you you've scraped it enough. I can't really, I'm not gonna be able to get it to pick up on the camera, but once you use one, it's pretty easy to figure out. So I'm gonna continue smoothing this out, and then I'll I'll show you my next step. It's nice and smooth. I'm going to clean some of this off here. So, <clears throat> sorry about that. But the last step I like to do, I'm going to get this all. Great, Chris. Last thing I like to do is take a, um, 
This is 4 aught steel wool. And I like to call it burnishing. Um, so I'm just going to kind of rub this handle with a pretty good amount of force and friction. And it really, really makes the handle pop. And it gets <clears throat> all the rest of that stuff off there. Um, well, stuff. Any kind of um, crud or dirt from your hands, oils. And then it's, it, it really smooths the wood. Um, just really like glass. You can almost see the sheen. Yeah, you can see the sheen. Look down here, we're still... It's a little dull, but... You can really see it. It really makes that grain pop. And... I think it's worth the... I think it's worth the effort. It's a little... It's a little hard, because... You want to put some moderate pressure on there. Put your purses down, boys. Tell you, I go through a lot of four rot steel wool <laughs> and use it for a lot of things. It's a good, good product to have on hand and lots of it. This is going to make this handle just really pop, really smooth, it's just gorgeous. Um, if you're a handle burner, you're going to want to burn your handle before you do this, and then do this, uh, because when you burn the handle, it raises the grains in the wood, and you're going to want to knock those down before you finish it. You're going to have a pretty rough handle, so keep that in mind. I'm not big on burning handles. Um, well, you could do this and then burn it and then go back and do it again. That would actually probably be better. But um, if I burn handles, I usually burn them until uh, they're black completely because I like the effect. I'd rather have either all wood or all black. Everybody's got their own thing, though. Our own style. That's what sets us all apart. That's what you want to strive for, your own style. I want to be Mr. Copy Pants. <laughs> This looks absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. All right, I'm gonna finish this up and then we'll put some finish on her. All right guys, so the handle's all prepped. It's ready to go. It looks beautiful. Um, so now I'm gonna do my uh, my handle treatment, there's a lot of different things you can use on this. None of them are wrong. <clears throat> uh, paste wax works good. Straight boiled linseed oil works good. Watco uh, Danish oil works real good. Um, I like to use a little something called snake juice. 
And what this is, it's a 50-50 mix of boiled linseed oil and pine tar. And what I like about it is it gives it a deeper color. Um, it's not just a, a, a light amber. It's, it's deeper color that you really only achieve a darker color with just straight boiled in oil after using it many times and then recoating it a couple but this tends to leave a darker finish <clears throat> um, you could stain your handles and paint your handles whatever you want to do I mean it, it's so endless the things you can do to these axes to make them unique and um, kind of like your individual signature but um, I just like to I don't know I like to experiment sometimes I I prefer paste wax uh, over anything paste wax is nice because it dries pretty much immediately so <clears throat> you're gonna want to get um, a good coat on this, but you can't you can't put it on too thick. It will gum up. So you want to do thin coats. Make sure you get your end. Um, let it dry. Put in another coat on it. Let it dry. Um, I don't know. They they have all kinds of theories on how much to put on and how often and uh, I don't know I I just I just put oil I just put oil on it a couple good coats um, right off the bat and then if I use an axe I, I bring it in I clean it up uh, and I put a, another coat of oil on it just as I use them. Um, sometimes <clears throat> sometimes I'll grab an axe that's been sitting around for a while and I'll take it and put a put a light coat of oil on it and let it dry, just give it a little bit of love. It's just use your own discretion. I mean some guys soak them. I don't know if any of that stuff's necessary. You know, a certain amount of the oil is going to penetrate the handle. Um, I don't know if you need the whole thing completely covered. Or completely soaked through. Keep a, a paint can here. Can you see that? I keep a paint can here, and I keep rags in it that have uh, this oil on it because if you let this stuff uh, dry, wad it up, it, it can spontaneously combust. So I like to uh, keep them in an airtight container. And uh, I don't have to worry about burning my shop down. Get a little bit on the on the old bench, but that's good for. Her. So it's just a matter of putting a coat on, wiping off the excess, letting it dry, rinse and repeat. I just keep doing that until I, I either get tired of it or I achieve the color I was going for. Um, the more coats you put on it, the darker it will get. Make sure you get your wedge on the top of your eye. Don't 
let this stuff dry on your steel. It will dry gummy. See a lot of flea marketers, that's an old trick they do is they'll get an axe, hit it with a wire brush and then just coat the head with boiled linseed oil and it um, you know just makes the head shine. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Keep on loving her. Thank you.